Summit. We just got finished with your coaches seminar, Greg Sounders. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves for us? DeAndre Corby. I, uh, in relation to Greg, I came up there around three years ago in 2020 and uh, right before COVID happened. And I, perfect timing. Yeah, perfect timing. <laughs> it was great. You know, it was great because nothing was going on. I could restart my the whole way I looked at jiu-jitsu. And that's what I did. You know, it was like I came up in the gi, uh, competing in the gi, training in the gi, and then under the traditional approach, high repping, passive drilling. And then I walk into standard and just it looked different. And as soon as I got on the mat, I was like, man, I don't know grappling. <laughs> And that's, uh, and that's where I'm in. And ever since I've been competing under Greg, uh, you know, we've been doing the ADCC circuits and IBGF opens and the major t uh, doing the major tournaments. And our goal is now is to get to ADCC. Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Noah Schaffner. Um, I started training in January of 2021, so like very beginning of COVID. Um, uh, I started there and I was doing gi and no gi for the first uh, three weeks and then immediately I, I knew like uh, this was a sport for me. I, I really enjoyed it and I got really passionate about it really fast and uh, I told Greg that and uh, I asked him what I should do if I wanted to take it seriously uh, competitively and he told me to stop training in the gi. <laughs> so I immediately stopped training in the gi and I did both of the no gi classes instead and then I think like a few months in I signed up for a competition not knowing that you had to be on the competition team. And so I told Greg that I signed up for a competition. He's like, well, you can't do that. Uh, but it's too late now, so you bought yourself a lonely ticket to the comp team. And so I ended up there, and uh, I got my ass absolutely whooped as a prepubescent child for a few months. And then, you know, I started to get conditioned to it and started to get a little more comfortable there. And so I'm, I'm definitely lucky that I, I was training at a very high level with a lot of high level guys from a very uh, early point. And um, I started when Greg had already had at least fundamentally had a fully formed philosophy in terms of how he was approaching training. Um, so I'm essentially just his lab rat. So, you know, Call hey, me. we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it goes well. Call him the purebred because he didn't come up doing yeah. like the traditional right. drill. This is all you know. Like, yeah. I had to unlearn. Yeah. I had to unlearn a lot. Yep. So that's why we wanted to have you guys on. Right? Obviously, just hearing you guys talk after Greg's seminar, I said to Pat, it's like, so interesting to hear these guys talk about it because they... Not only do you believe, right? I mean, it's the proof's in the pudding for your own performance, right? Mm -hmm. But like, they can explain exactly what's going on, and like, so we've been doing this uh, at our at Pat's gym for I don't know, six months, oh, maybe, nice. right? So trying to follow the philosophy, trying to follow what you guys are doing, feeling some of your games, etc. Yep. Um, but historically, at the school, everybody, you know, we were doing regular stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. I was a details guy. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So it was all in the details. Yeah, so yeah. Like a million details. <clears throat> so it's been a big change. I think we were saying to Greg, like the. Um, the difference, so I teach a couple of our fundamental classes, mm -hmm. and those guys are like, oh, we've learned more in you know, the couple months you guys have been doing yeah. that style than we had in the year previous, which is awesome, right? Because they, but it's, I'm not so sure that they're, like, it's getting the concept down for the guys who have, you know, who are not purebred, right? <laughs> right? It's it's difficult for them. They're they keep trying to do course. other things, yeah, yeah. right? Oh, we got that, too. We have a lot of <clears throat> visiting brown belts and black belts, and they, we put them on Noah. Yeah. Dude, he's been training for two years, and it's like they they when they find out later that he's just the he just turned he just got his blue belt not yeah. so long ago, like they're like holy shit, you yeah. know. But yeah, it's like the thing is like with this approach is like what you're talking about with, with your fundamentals, your foundations class. Those in those six months, how much time have they spent in the real environment? Yeah. yeah. Me, you know, I didn't know anybody. I was oh, I just I knew how to work hard. Me and my brother knew how to drill and we got after it. We, we it had some success but how, you think about how much time we did in those years spending time in a fault environment like no resistance you know mm -hmm. it, it wasn't a good way to allocate your time if you want to get skilled and yeah. that's why those guys are like six months in like I learned so much yeah just yeah. the games. Yeah. and it, it's uh it was really eye-opening for me um because I was I was maybe a year in I was still I was still white belt and uh this uh, guy came in from Yamasaki and Greg had put me with him and he didn't tell me uh, at, the time, at the time I didn't know when I was training with him but Greg had told me that he was a black belt after and uh, I mushed the guy like the entire class like I, I beat his ass bad and I didn't realize until after that uh, Greg had told me and I maybe had like you know like maybe five minutes of like oh 
you know what, I'm just the shit. Like, that's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like I, I'm just that guy. But, like, you know, and then, you know, it starts to cool down and you start to, like, think about it rationally. And it's like, that, there's very few sports where that can happen, where somebody has 10 years of experience and I can come in with one year of experience. And I don't know if you noticed, I'm not exactly a fucking genetic freak. I'm a pretty, like, normal 17 year old boy. It's a nice competitor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, the, the baseline's not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and um, so it's just having that revelation of, like, uh, Greg says the phrase all the time it's like, Jiu Jitsu is really in the leather helmet phase where. I joined the sport where I, at the same time, I'm super passionate about it. I'm also catching a really, really big wave where uh, the community is finally starting to get on, at least they're starting to get a general grasp as to how we're supposed to actually acquire skill and how people actually get better at grappling instead of, you know, all the fat, which is what we're trying to cut out. You know, when he says the leather helmet, but he's talking about in terms of how, we should, how the community as a whole structures the practice. You know, you go to a D1 wrestling program, if you go to every D1 wrestling program, it's pretty much a structure, structure the same, and they're allowing their athletes to be athletes, and that's what makes for, you know, we, we joke about, I don't even watch grappling, I enjoy watching wrestling more, because yep. you hear the commentary about, it. they're not talk, they're not yelling out moves, they're talking like, oh, they're talking about what's actually happening, guys getting higher on the hips, or yeah, he's, yeah, putting hand, yeah. hands, he's yeah. getting his hands on him, he's putting his yeah. hands on the mat, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what they're talking about. Towards, like, like, if you listen to most jiu-jitsu commentaries, like, watch out for the... My favorite. Watch out for the triangle. Yeah, Watch yeah, yeah. out or, or or double kiss the dragon. X guard. Pass. He's so explosive. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what he means. That's, yeah, what, yeah. What, that's what Greg means yeah. when wearing the leather helmet means. You know? right. And and I think that's what Greg is really trying to do is change the way the most people look at practice structure. And imagine if all practices were like that. Imagine the grappling that will as like the community as a whole. Yeah. And then then you'll get like. Then you could get grapplers making like MMA type one, yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. It's already on. Yeah. It's already on its way. Like that with like Mo doing all the ADCC tests yeah, right now. I, I think, think a lot of people get a, a bad taste in their mouth with Greg, where because Greg is. I mean, if we're being honest, Greg is telling you that everything that you've been doing for decades is completely wrong, right. and you haven't been doing anything. Right. You've been lying to yourself, right. and that's a fucking shitty thing to hear. Like you know, I obviously can't relate because yeah. you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough where I got to start from the jump. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was just going to say though, I think he's the perfect personality for it because like, absolutely. if you're just catching yeah. little clips and sound bites, you're like, who's this guy that's all fired up talking yeah, shit? Yeah. And then you start watching more and more and, and you're like, oh, he's awesome. I, I mean, I, I've been with him for now for like two and a half years. Like I, I've known him, uh, like I'm with him every single day in the room and I, I've talked to him enough where I realized like... It may, I can understand why it comes off as disdain from the jiu-jitsu community, but it really is that he just wants the jiu-jitsu community to be better in yeah. terms of what we're doing, and if, we have to actually understand what we're doing, because, you know, it, he loves the sport too, he just sees it a completely different way. Right, right, and you know, he's very, like, in his coaching too, he's not going to sugarcoat, like, he's very direct with his guys, yeah. and, and it works, and, and most of his, the reason, because he develops a culture in the gym where... They can take like all their all the guys in there, all the athletes in there can take that direct coaching, and there's no like like we're saying, there's no extra stuff. You know, right. we're not trying to make you guys. He's not trying to make the guys feel good. He's mm -hmm. like, we're trying to develop skill. Yeah, you know? I, I never once felt like even with all of the like uh, like bullshit applaud that you get from like the hobbyists that are like, wow, like you're so good for the amount of time that you've been training. I've never felt once that I was being fed any of that bullshit from Greg, and I think that. Uh, it makes me feel a lot more comfortable with that, you know, I'm not going to end up like one of those kids no. getting fucking <laughs> brainwashed. No, I let him know. Yeah, I let him know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's like, I, I'm not in standard beating up the guys. Yeah. I'm in there getting beat up and having fucking wars. That's why I have improved at yeah. the rate that I have. Yeah. But, it's good. yeah, it's good. but it's that's, good. yeah, it's the ease of, ease of access to the training partners that I have and the methodology that we're training under, where... All I have to do is walk in there and show up, like yeah, you know the instruction. Yeah, it's like that Malcolm Gladwell book, uh, Outliers or whatever, where it's, yeah, yeah. you know, like circumstances contribute a lot more than the individual itself. That's how I feel about myself, kinda. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like I just kind of I scratched all the right numbers and I fucking hit the lottery. So, so had you, um, how did you even get started? Like, how did you end up even in the gate to start with? I know it's yeah, short no, yeah. That, so, how did you even end up? Um, I think originally I think I just liked MMA, like obviously, like. Yeah. Sounds fucked up, but violence is fun to watch. So I started with MMA, but then obviously specifically the grappling aspect uh, of it caught my attention for 
one, because it, uh, it seemed more interesting to me at the time, and also it would be a, a lot easier of a pitch to my family of, I won't get punched in the head and kicked in the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's a lot easier of a pitch to make. And then, uh, obviously, I, I think probably for a few months before I started, I was begging my parents to let me go, but uh, we were still trying to put money together where they felt comfortable investing in that. And then uh, in that time, I, I was watching YouTube videos every day. I was watching all the content. And at the time, obviously, I did not know. But looking back, I do remember having a, like a sensation of uh, – it felt like everybody was saying so much at the same time they were saying nothing. Where it was like, I don't know what to do with any of this information. And then when I finally walked into the training room and I actually like realized, it's like, oh, they are actually telling me nothing. None of this works. None of this applies. Where uh, – I only trained in the gi because I saw in those YouTube videos, it's like, that's what you're supposed to do. Like, it's, it's B, at the time, it's BJJ, it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So, it, you know, like, uh, I didn't want to separate from it or take a step in the wrong direction. But once Greg told me the step to take, I was like, all right, cool, whatever you say, dude. Yeah, okay. we, we recently, what I mean recently is like, I think it was 20, 20, end of 2021, we got rid of it. So it wasn't that long ago. Greg, I think when Greg started really developing the methodology, he just made, he pulled the trigger on that, like, yeah, do it. Yep. You know, he, he actually got rid of the kids program too. Mm -hmm. Like, cause he, what Greg wants, he wants, he wants to develop a team. Mm -hmm. He wants to develop a team that, of everybody that, that wants and shares the same passion of doing jujitsu. Yeah. And, and they want to improve. And that's all, that's all he really, yeah. Really I think one it. of the biggest, like, stark contrasts to him and most jujitsu coaches, and specifically uh, gym owners, is most of the time they're running a business. Greg is not running a business. Right. He's running a gym. And they're trying to make a product, and they're trying to sell you something, they're trying to market you something. Greg is trying to make competitors. Right. He doesn't give a fuck about any of that, and it's abundantly clear. So <laughs> why, would, why would I not feel comfortable walking in there every day when I can tell that he has that much investment in me where he doesn't even care about how much money he's getting yeah, in? That's he doesn't, we've had people <laughs> not pay membership for like a year and a half, and he doesn't realize. The other thing is like, <laughs> Judas Co Greg is a Judas coach, good. Very good. Yeah. This is man. <laughs> not so but, but, this but, is man enough to keep the gym open. Yeah, but I think that's what, but no, that's what, that's what his main goal is in terms of with this approach and the gym is create a group of, uh, of individuals that really want to find the, the absolute limit of grappling, you know. And and if that was in, in this case, one of the steps was getting away from the antiquated traditional approach and introducing this approach. You guys experienced today, right? Yeah, Greg, it, that's all, that's a hundred percent Greg. That's what, how it feels like in the gym. Mm -hmm. it, the only thing that's different is like we do tens instead of sixties. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that reception that you're getting from your students, where like they feel like they're improving in such a drastically shorter amount of time than they normally would be, it's not just that, but it's also if you ask them, it's probably a lot more fucking fun. Like, probably, yeah, yeah, like well, yeah. I don't want to get out of high school, be a grown ass man in the world, like I'm an own my, my own adult, and then I walk into a building and some old Brazilian guy is like, all right, we're gonna run in circles and do push ups and jumping jacks, and then <laughs> do the same more. movement over and over and over again, and then you get ten minutes of training. Yeah. In our it's beginners like, class before, there was no live action, like it's just very oh, basic. Man. Like, it's like right. people are leaving without breaking a sweat. Yeah, yeah. right, right, yeah. right. And like, now they get you to want to leave feeling like you train safely. Yeah, totally. Because it's not just day one, like go fight whoever. It's like, all right, you're in this very constrained scenario. Yeah. It's gonna be safe, yeah. but you're gonna really experience jujitsu. And that's what Greg does. With, like in terms of his approach with beginners, he he plays games with. He calls it low variability, right? Where there's not a lot of right. It's not. We're not gonna open spar, right? He may have, the the more variable game is reserved for the competitors and the more advanced players. But yeah. in terms of like brand new guys, you start them in a low variable in the game where the chances of, you know, they're not, they don't have the conditioning yet, they don't, they don't even, you don't even know if they're comfortable with having another human on top of it, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you play it in a low, that's how you introduce it, that's how he introduced it to brand new players, you know, it's, and I think that approach was great, because I was, I was asking the same question, like, when I first got there, like, how do you do, the, how do you, how are you going to make a brand new, never seen jujitsu before guy do jujitsu, and then, and then, Exactly what you saw here. Play a low variable. The first game we played was like get the guy on their back. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can understand that, you know. Right. And, and you're actually in the environment too. It, it works wonders, man. It's awesome. Here's one thing we run into. I want to ask you guys about. So, yeah, since we're 
you're just getting into us, we have like purple belts that have been training otherwise up to purple belt. How do we stop them from always trying to give everybody the details? Do you just like call it out on the spot? Like you gotta stop. I know Greg, he like called this in at one point. It was like all these little breakout sessions, everyone's talking this or that. Yep. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> you know, Greg, he, I don't think he actually stops the, those guys from doing it. He invites them. But he just makes sure all his guys know the foundational things that make guard. Let's say, let's say, for example, like we use like the knee cut because everybody knows the knee cut is from the traditional approach, right? Yeah. The knee cut is a sequence of moves or a sequence of steps that solve its solution to a problem, right? So it's a specific problem at a specific time, right? But all the knee cut, the leg drag, what, name any pads, they all require the same conditions, you know. And in terms of when when guys break out and they start talking. Greg, he doesn't necessarily stop it, but he makes sure the students know that all those things require these specific conditions to bring it back to the So you have to make sure those higher ranked guys yeah. are they're in on the big picture. Yeah, they, they have to be. Well, because it makes sense for, if you're a higher belt and you're, especially if you're competing, it makes sense to focus on those details. Right, right. But you just have to realize that those details are specific to you right. and specific to the person that you're doing them to. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. gonna change as soon as you're rolling with somebody else or just by the day. Like, it, in it's my never years, gonna be the same. In my years being there, I've never seen, and those happen. You know, we have a couple guys that they talk about those details, like they get real specific in, in the nitty gritty. And I don't, I, I don't, I have never seen Gray like squash it or stop it, right? He invites the, the, the talk, right? Because that's what we're, we're in a, we're in a learning environment. It's like everybody can learn from everybody type thing, but we have to also be on, aligned with, Right. What is actually happening, and that's what that's what Greg's job yeah. is to make sure all our guys. So it's are all aligned. aligned with those core yeah. principles right. and what right. we're trying to accomplish. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, how about where I see this too sometimes, right? Where every once in a while we'll get like you know a higher level guy in the fundamentals class just trying to get some extra working, but they always seem to like take the game one step further, mm -hmm. right? They go outside of the constraints. Yeah. So, you know, they're right. doing a sweep, but we're not trying to do a sweep, right? Yeah. Right. right. Like, does that happen? Like, what is? Um, not super often. Um. But when it does happen, it's generally not a huge issue. It's just going to be more of Greg might have to wait. He might stop the round early, or he might wait for the round to finish, and then he might go out there. And relative to how far out of the constraints that person may be going, the, he, 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 yes, exactly. He'll just realign focus. Okay. He'll start to direct everybody's attention to what is actually important about the game. Okay. And then if it still continues with that individual, he might come over to them specifically and be like, hey, like this is the task of the game. Right. This is what you're trying to do. You don't need to go past this at a yeah. certain point because we're trying to develop X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> As an advanced player, too, like let's say like uh, I'm the advanced player, right? He will let the guy know, like, all right, I know you can sweep. I know you can do all these things. But how 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 well can you hold the knee line? Yeah. Can you can you maximize that condition yeah. under after ten rounds, after three rounds, how how whatever long, right? Can you like as an advanced player, can you hyper focus on the task mm. without losing the focus? Right. Through, from being fatigued, from having a whatever, right? You just I think he directs that advanced player's skill and Attentional focus yeah. to the task itself. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, really that's what you, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like, if the player does engage in it, they're going to realize that they're not good at the task, and then they're gonna be like, "Oh, there is something here that I need to develop." So, and there's there's times where there's advanced players and there's a skill gap in the training, yeah. right? You know, and as the advanced player, if the training is a practice and practice is defined as trying to get improved and not a certain outcome, right? As an advanced player, he'll he'll make his guys align with. All right. How can I stay on the task? How can I maintain that focus? If the if the task was like, for example, using our example, like getting the guy on their back, how how often can I get him on their back? Mm -hmm. Make it a game within yeah, the game, right, right? right? How 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 long can I keep him there? Make it a, make it a game within. Uh, yeah, the yeah. base task is to get him on their back. Yeah. But now let's can if as an advanced player, can I keep him there? Yeah, you know. It's like you hear Greg say it all the time. Speaking like, of the boss. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. Yeah, like when he talks about like attention and intention, like that's not something that he is only responsible for focusing us on, but it's also the onus is on us to go out of our way. Right. So if I'm training with somebody where I might be able to just pass them over again and mush them and submit them over and over again, but that might be a lot less productive of a training session, whereas if I was to direct my focus on 
just keeping his feet off me and keeping him on his back. I'm going to de be actively developing that skill instead of throwing around a limp body. Yeah. Yeah. We're at the skill development, not winning. Yeah, you know, yeah winning that's, the practice. that's yeah. what we I see, right? That a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. what I see. Is you see the guys who are like more concerned about, I've got to win, right? Mm -hmm. In tradition, I'm going to win by... I'll, the game is done, right? And I'm going to sweep him. I'm going to get yeah. on top. Yep. Gonna... Pat yourself on the back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But because you get good. Yeah. yeah. You get better. You know? Yeah. A training yeah. environment and performance environment are drastically different. The goal is the same in terms of you know strangling or breaking your opponent, but you know one of them you're trying to get better at it, and the other one you're trying to do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. How everybody listen to your coach. If they set the constraints, stay within the constraints. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There is your coach Seems for a easy. reason. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. 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 Easier said than done. You want to ask normal questions? Yeah, so um, on our podcast, we always ask people what their walkout song is. We have a whole Spotify playlist. We compile all this stuff in there. You guys have a go-to that you use every time. I haven't gotten asked when I want so, to. Oh, no, my brother. Well, sometimes they're hypothetical. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> my brother and I talked about this. We actually talked about this pretty extensively. We were like, all right, this is the goal. If we ever have our guys are finding like a who's number one or a situation we have to walk out. Yeah. The team will pick out their walkout unbeknownst no <laughs> none no. Oh. So as soon as you're walking out, you're about to go kill this guy. <laughs> whatever to play. You know, Nicki like, Minaj. Nicki Minaj or whatever, you know? Like, That's Tony's walkout. No, Cardi B, right? <laughs> it could be that. Like, and, and you just gotta really like, and we talk about, we, we, one of the things we talk about in, in terms of, of doing your jiu we talk about resolution, resolving in like any situation, yeah. right? Uh, there's some psychological resolving ha that has to happen there. Like you walk out, you got to be like, yeah, yeah. The task is the same. <laughs> you know, you get to throw yeah, yeah. on whatever. And then he, like, my, I don't know if you guys know my brother Gavin. He, he he trains. He's making this move up to Maryland. He's gonna train with us on on a regular basis now. But he made he came up with that. It's like, hey, dude, we should do that. Like if let's say Noah's going out to fight and it's like there's a walkout song where all the whole group is gonna <laughs> figure out a song. Looking that's at Noah, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, 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 that's so, like, awesome. so now, and that could happen, like, you know, if Noah's, if Noah's, if it's a big match, we probably wouldn't pick a, a song that's going to, like, <laughs> knock him off his, his game, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. What DeAndre was trying to say was any DMX song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I kind of, we can't really fit that into the uh, playlist, but we'll, yeah, yeah. I love the idea, nonetheless, it's awesome. Right, yeah. 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 That's good. But if I had to pick, I would literally go... I would ask somebody, the immediate person next to me, like, what was the last song? Because I don't want to have to make that decision, man. I was like, all right, let's go. I just want to fight. I don't yeah, care. I end up walking out to fucking Philly Idol or some <laughs> shit. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, that's right. Oh, man. It's good. Uh, when people ask you what you do, right? Mm. Like, oh, what's this thing you're doing? You do karate? Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Do you, what do you tell them? Uh, I will tell them that. I will tell them it's like wrestling, and then if they ask anything further, I just tell them it's wrestling with submissions. And then if they ask a lot of questions, I'll go, have you ever seen the UFC thing? <laughs> have you seen the part where they strangle each other and break each other's limbs? It's just that part. And then that usually gets a message across. Yeah. 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 But then they, sometimes people will kind of know what jiu-jitsu is, and they'll ask me if it's jiu-jitsu. And I'm hesitant to say yes, because I know that they're imagining me with the pajamas on, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. doing cartwheels and yeah. shit. So, yeah. I think the MMA thing was like a better. Yeah. The yeah. ground, the ground we're on in MMA is a better exactly, way yeah. to picture it. You know? Yeah, because most people know what the UFC is, yeah. so it's easier to contextualize. Yeah. Um, what do you say? Oh, dude, that happens all the time. <laughs> so, like, because I, 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 I work a regular job, a regular nine to five, right? And like my job, I work for the the government area. I work for the Navy, so like we're. <laughs> Like, it's almost like a separate life from, like, they, they don't know, like, because they don't follow me on Instagram, they right, don't right. follow, like, they, they don't know, but it, like, sometimes we'll just have times, like, yeah, I do jiu-jitsu, and, and they'll be like, uh, what I usually do is, like, just Google YouTube my name, yeah. <laughs> and then that's what jiu-jitsu is, yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot easier, it's right. like, oh, oh, that's cool, and then it's cool, like, some of the guys actually in my office started, like, following, following me on the right. terms, like, and I'll tell everybody, oh, you hey, go, D won this weekend, and it's like, yeah. But then, then again, like in terms of because like, I'm an engineer, in, in terms of engineering, I, I consider myself a white belt. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I, don't know, yeah, yeah. I, I barely know anything. But, That's a blue belt engineer. <laughs> yeah, like, nice. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Shoot, yeah I, wish, I wish I could like tell people that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't do any of those tests. tests. I uh, I work a nine to five. I work at a one in an office room with people, and my I used to have a boss that would say. Oh, don't get Jeff mad because he's a cage fighter. And I was oh, like, bro. Oof. 
Yeah. Nothing could be further from the yeah, truth yeah, yeah. than that. Right? You're going to get some lady walking up to you and like, I do cardio kickboxing yeah, on Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to be like, Steve, shut up. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that. Like, there's one lady in my office that does, has like a cardio kickboxing gym, right? And they they like, yo, you, you got to do something similar, right? It's like, no. Yeah, right. No, absolutely not. Right. Yeah. You, I'm training to break people. Uh, yeah, she's yeah. training to... Get a soccer mom to lose some weight or something yeah, like that. Off, off camera, I can hear Greg laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you get those questions too. So. You don't know mind. <laughs> well, then they follow up with, "Oh, so you can probably kick my ass, right?" <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Yeah, and I was just like, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like this is a great way to engage in conversation. Yeah. You made my entire personality that I can beat your ass. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> so before we wrap it up and let you guys get out of here, what's next competition-wise for you two? Uh, so I think in July we don't have anything. We just came off a like a three month co- competition cycle. We went hit all the ADCC OB in Canada. We had Denver and Dallas last yeah, month. You did Vegas too. I did Vegas. Yeah, I did yeah. a couple. That was a couple months ago. But uh, I think what we got next is uh, Arizona ADCC Open. I think there's a Chicago in September, and then obviously October big one yeah. the trials. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get that ticket. Yeah. Nice. So sure. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate the knowledge drops yeah, totally. out there and in here. Sure. Yeah, it's awesome. it was cool. I mean, we've listened to, to every show Greg's been on, so it's cool to hear this pr- perspective from the student level. Yeah, yeah. There you go. It's yeah. real Greg. <laughs> you get it, you get it from the apostles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just some yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard guys way too fucking aggressive. <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. No, I'll take care. No problem. Thank you.